and their direct competitor racked and royalty program here, and their indirect competitor on the crypto space, such as Blade Browser, Adex, Herium, and KP3 on network here. Okay? And the first things I want you to pay attention to is crypto earning size. Bigger earning size all the time welcome to the consumer. I'm Mr. Masa. So today's an investment review for the Stomax token called as STMX. Okay, so let's start. So as usual, this is my proposed strategy. So I only allocate my assets to the Bitcoin and all the altcoins which is led these six categories. And if you want to deepen your understanding about my proposed strategy, please check out my other video about my proposed strategy. Okay. And today's matching category, the STMX, is here B2C DApps. Okay. And uh, usually I'm going to apply the six analog points, so standing for the pain points, product, team, execution power, token economy, and the hype cycle. And for each, I set a 5.0 point here, so the total score is 30 point, 3-0, okay? And then let's start from the number one, pain point analysis. Then here's the pain point. So blockchain industry needs scalable crypto earning engines for 4 billion internet users. Let me tell you the background here. So first things I want you to understand here is current blockchain mainstream is investment. Okay, but think about the future long-term market developments for entire you know, world internet user. What we need is consumer-friendly solutions with a lower risk to own and use crypto assets on their daily life. So when you look at the internet, like in Google, search engine, social network, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube stuff, same things. The smartphone, the iTunes, and the e-commerce, Amazon. As you know that, every single internet user uses some of their solutions, right? Which is also directly related to their chasm theory. All the time I tell you guys about the details are here. So they have major five key user base. Starting from the innovator, early adapter, and the chasm here, and the early majority, late majority, and the late mass. And the innovator and early adapter simply say they are the risk takers. So even the current blockchain mainstream is an investment from the business perspective, it doesn't matter for them because you know, they can take that risk on their own. But after the crossing chasm, when you look at the you know, early majority, rate majority and late mass, relatively those user base is risk reverse. So low risk crypto asset earning solutions, it's pretty important for them. Then here's a couple of like similar like lower risk solutions in a market right now is NFT. Such as like an NFT game, Crypto Kitties, you're gonna grow up, you know, very cutie kitty characters in the game, and you can sell the other and you can ETH. Same as NFT R2. Crossload, one of the major digital art in the crypto space right now. So you're gonna make the very beautiful and contextually interesting digital art on the platform, and then you can sell this NFT art on their exchange, and you can earn NFT token, ETH token on the platform. The things I want you to understand here is it also requires special skill sets. You have to know about you know, how you're going to design the graphic stuff and implement this kind of coding stuff too. Same as game too. It's for NFT virtual goods business stuff. It's for kind of like professional gamers. So normal people, most of like internet user, cannot do these kind of things. So instead, we have to develop the much more scalable solutions, right? And based on this understanding, let's move to the next topic, product analysis. And then before I move into the details stuff, let's check out the history overview of the Stomax. Stomax founded in 2017 in Seattle, US by Simon and Carvin. And it offers a blockchain-based global and mobile-first earning marketplace to bring job maker and the job doer together, but now they pivot to reward program. It's part of the use case of job maker and job doer stuff, but only for marketing perspective, okay? Because it simply says it's an affiliate program. And then they're gonna rise 32.6 million in total. The latest round was ICO held on October 2017. And here is product overview of Stomax. So once you're gonna download it, there 
iPhone application or Android applications. So this is the first user interface. So here is some kind of e-commerce player here, such as travel website Agoda. And then once you can click this link, you know, they're going to directly connect to the Agoda application or website. And then you can get the 17% discounts. Then once you're going to purchase a certain travel package, hotel or flight staff on Agoda, you can get the 70% of the total purchase with the crypto asset reward, such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. Okay. Also, they have put some kind of micro task platform here, such as crowdsourcing and freelancer stuff. But earning level is not that you know, pretty big one right now. Okay. And uh, another important item, it's pretty interesting one, is once you're going to stake STMX by integrating your wallet, such as you know, MetaMask or Trust Wallet on this application, StormX, then you're going to stake this STMX. You can get more additional reward bonus with these staking solutions, which is directly related to the token economy of the STMX. About the detail, let me tell you later on the token economy analysis as usual. Okay. Then this is a detail about staking benefits of the StormX. It's pretty similar to the Rakuten royalty program. So there is certain level of rank, such as purple, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Then this is the minimum requirement about the staking level. 3,000 STMX staking for bronze or 6.2 million staking of the STMX for diamond class. Then hold time here, all are required one year at the minimum level. And here's the reward. On a bronze level, 25% crypto cashback reward increase. This is not that bad. And once you're going to reach the diamond level, 250% crypto cashback reward increase plus 75% reward time reductions, which means that reward time is much faster than other users too. It's a pretty simple you know, gamification mechanism here, but I think it's quite powerful. Okay. Now, as usual, this is a valve card portioning analysis and it's StormX here. And then they are direct competitor racked and royalty program here. And then they're indirect competitor on the crypto space, such as Blade Browser, Adex, Herium, and the KP3L network here. Okay. And the first things I want you to pay attention to is crypto earning size. Bigger earning size all the time welcome to the consumer, normal user, right? Then since StormX, not that bad level, but compared with like Helium and the KP3 network, it's still small size. Because Helium network, for example, once you're gonna set up your Wi-Fi routing of the Helium network inside the house and it connect to your home internet and it open this Wi-Fi network to the public, this machine automatically earn H entity token. It's pretty easy, but also pretty big potential to earn you know, H entity tokens. KP3 network is actually much more powerful because it's job, real job on a DeFi space. So it's pretty big potential here. Brave browser almost like the same level compared with StormX because once you're gonna download the Brave browser applications on a smartphone or desktop, by watching ads, you can earn some tokens, but you know, amount is not that big. Okay, so almost the same level. But frictionless level, Brave browser it's much advantageous than StormX because Every single internet user use web browsing software, right? Chrome, Firefox, anything. Then Brave Browser, since they're gonna made by X Firefox team, so it's well designed, well updated product here. And also the watching ads on a Brave Browser require no additional task. It's pretty easy, so very frictionless. Same as Helium Network too, and the KP3 same as too because it's a job, real job. But StormX in this case. You have to choose the merchant on the StormX platform, not Amazon or not Rakuten. It's a little bit, you know, additional task which is required. So I said be here. But you know, there are another advantage actually crypto asset selections. Of course, Rakuten program is only points, so no crypto assets. But when you look at the Brave Browser, Helium, and the KP3 network, all the reward based on their own token, such as BAT token for Brave Browser. HNT token, the Helium network, and the KP3 tokens on their own platform here. But StormX, they're going to provide Bitcoin or ETH, major crypto assets, or any kind of high potential altcoin token too. So from this perspective, they can provide a much better customer experiences here. That's the advantage. And the next one is lower earning risk. 
it's related to this one, crypto asset selection too, because Bitcoin is one of the most, you know, largest market cap on the crypto space. So for those users who want to earn crypto assets, Bitcoin is the most easiest one, right? But when you look at the, you know, Helium KP3 network, still very early stage. So some users see some risk about, you know, they have token potential. So I set the B level here. On the Brave Browser, since, you know, their project itself is kind of very steady growth level, already have over 20 million active user base in a global basis. So almost same level as StormX, so A. And last item, geographical scalability. It's actually one of the most important items. Brave Browser, no geographical constraints because it's a browser software. Anyone in the world can download browsing software, right? Helium network, kind of same because, you know, Wi-Fi routing solution. Every single internet user, they're going to use Wi-Fi. Simple. KP3, same things because it's a job and then currently they focus on DeFi market. The DeFi job task, there is no limits about geographical things. But StormX, they have, you know, chicken egg problem because if they can acquire a merchant in a local space, local user there, they're not going to join the StormX ecosystem platform, right? So they have to develop a certain level of the merchant acquisition team or a mechanism or partnership in a global basis. That's one of, you know, required a huge tough work for them. So about geographical scalability, they have a limitation here, okay? Then number three, team analysis. So these are the key members, Simon, co-founder and CEO, and also he's an ex-CEO and co-founder at the Bomber Fusions, Seattle's first best Korean-Mexican fusion food truck. And he made this one is quite successful. Before starting Bomber Fusions, he was a senior credit risk analyst at the Key Bank. And he got the BA with finance at the University of Washington. Not a tech entrepreneur, but well-experienced entrepreneur, okay? And Carvin, co-founder and CTO, he's also the co-owner and the web developer at the Bomber Fusions. So they used to work together pretty well. And he got the computer science degree at the University of Washington. Simply say, this founding member combination is pretty good because they already work together, make one project, set a project successful together. So it's great teamwork. And with, they also have plus 20 team members. It's not that big organizations at this moment, especially for developing the effective DAO mechanism. But as I said in the previous slide, since they have to develop the very effective mechanism to you know, acquire a new merchant in a global basis for, to scale up their business staff, so it's still a bit you know, unclear about this point. That's the things I want you to pay attention here about how they're gonna scale up their solutions, okay? And then number four, execution power analysis. So this is the data from their you know, pitch. Currently they have 50 SADA monthly active user and plus 20,000 retailer on their merchant ecosystem. In 2020, their growth rates after launching applications, it's pretty straight growth here. It's not that bad, okay? And then these are the major brands on their reward program. Look at here, like in Adidas, Nike, eBay, it's not that bad, right? It's pretty good. And then here's the additional growth factor, COVID-19. We know that, you know, Amazon, Uber is a huge success right now because of COVID-19, because a lot of people have to stay at home. So same positive effects on their StormX platform too. So this is pretty good for them, okay? And here's the reference that the things I want you to understand here about when you think about the potential of the StormX is Horny is one of their competitors here, has 70 million monthly active user with plus 30,000 retailers on their margin program as of November 2019, and which was acquired by PayPal with $4 billion. Honey is a benchmark of the Storm X. All right? This is things you should know, right? And then number five, token equipment analysis. And then this is a token economy design matrix, which I made, and then since Storm X is adapts, it's matching here. So network effects is the most important item to analyze the B2C application market, okay? And here's the network effect on STMX, which I analyzed. So this is a starting point. Those users who want to earn crypto assets for free or lower risk, okay? Then 
selection of the online retailer on the D2C brand all the time stimulate to join those users to this ecosystem and then which generate more traffic. With this traffic, the selection of the crypto assets also provide a better customer experiences user which can attract more users here. So this is a primary growth mechanism of the StormX, active user growth. And which is also heavily influenced on the second growth mechanism, asset growth with the limited supply model. And the good things about STMX is actually limited supply model. This is good from the telco economy perspective. As I said in previous slide, since they provide staking solutions to provide a more better reward program for the consumer entire user. So more traffic, more user all the time generate more staking demand here in the market. All right. Then this staking demand eventually lead to shorter token supply on the crypto exchange. So which also leads more blue pressure on the STMX play itself. So it's provide more better customer experience for the user because those users can expect more steady price increase on STMX. So lower risk about their token supply model here. Okay. So these two gross engine itself is help each other and correlate each other to maximize their network effects of their project. Okay. And the governance now. So we'll be very critical in the near future because in the Brave Browser and also KP3 network and Helium network, all tech player kind of indirect competitor on StormX or seriously working on to develop effective DAO. And one of the critical issues that the StormX have to solve is how they're going to scale up their merchant mechanism with a very small team by leveraging DAO ecosystem. Okay. So from this perspective, it's also a pretty critical issue for them in long term. And then number six, hype cycle analysis. And the Gartner hype cycle analysis, as usual, and a major matching category is here. Blockchain advertising, same as Brave Browser, because you know, simply say, you know, current Tom X is self affiliate program, which the other solutions on the blockchain. That's why, okay. And the second potential we have to think about the decentralized autonomous organizations. So about DAO is one of the critical issues for them have to solve. Okay, as I said, you know, how they're gonna develop the very scalable affiliate partnership program with a DAO based one. Okay. So final item, comprehensive evaluations. So about the pain points without any questions, this is 5.0 because so to attract over 4 billion internet user, lower list solutions to earn crypto assets is very critical. Brave Browser, Helium Network, KP3, it's same thing too. So I set the 5.0 here. And the product, I set the 5.0 here because but simply say reward program, as we can learn from the internet industry, this is not a killer solutions. So they have to scale up more other huge potential category, especially like job matching stuff like KP3 or network will be required. So I said 3.5 here. Team level, not that bad, but it's not a tech oriented one. About to develop the effective merchant acquisition mechanism, they have to develop a certain DAO mechanism here. Still, we cannot see the clear potential about this point. So I said 4.0 here. Execution power, 4.0, not that bad executions. But thinking about the killer solution perspective, we have to see more linear, scalable expansion model here. So I said the 4.0 here. About token economy, it's pretty well designed. The pretty good one. So I said the 4.5 here. And hype cycle, as I said, only issue they have to take over is actually down mechanism itself. And it's still a little bit unclear. So I said the 4.0 here. So the total score is 25 points. So my minimum investment criteria is 25 points. So I can recommend investment in STMX token here. Okay. So that is all this time. I also make a lot of interesting video on the crypto and the blockchain space. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Bye.